a sudden marriage. After having a little too much to drink at her bachelorette party, Emma Miller was very sleepy. Her fiancé, Nathan Davis, picked her up and brought her back to their apartment. He tucked her into bed in the dimly lit room, where she lay awake for a few minutes, unaware of her surroundings. Then, coming to her senses, she forced her eyes open against the pain of an excruciating headache. As her vision cleared, she could make out the figure of a man and woman across the room, hissing passionately. Emma tried to make sense of what she was seeing as she looked at the two kissing figures, who remained unaware that she had awoken. She felt anger begin to boil inside her. Amber, stop messing around. Emma only just fell asleep, Nathan warned as he grasped the woman around her waist. Afraid she'll wake up? Amber responded in an annoying tone. You're getting married tomorrow. Give yourself to me tonight. Babe, you are such a troublemaker. Let's go to the other room. The man smiled seductively. No, let's do it right here. I want to do it in front of her. Amber swiftly unbuttoned the man's shirt as her lips locked on his once again. Emma tried to hold back her tears, but she could feel them slowly trickling down her face. How could the man she was supposed to marry the next day be cheating on her? And right in front of her, too. Behave, Nathan said. Let's go into the bathroom. Isn't the tub your favorite place? Fine, you go in and fill the tub. Amber nudged his chest, pushing him toward the bathroom. Once Nathan had left the room, she tiptoed over to Emma and whispered, Emma, I'm not going to let you and Nathan get married tomorrow. I'm pregnant and he's mine. Emma balled her hands into fists as she tried to process what was happening. But once she heard the moans of the couple in the bathroom, she realized that her world had fallen apart. Three years ago, Emma had been a top model in New York. She'd given up everything to pursue her relationship with Nathan, even handing over hard-earned modeling work to Amber. But now, she realized, everything she had done had all gone toward preparing someone else to steal the man of her dreams. No, she thought, trying to lie to herself. This must be a dream, a horrible nightmare. Halfway through the night, Amber complained of feeling unwell, and Nathan led her out of the apartment. He didn't reappear. Even though he was supposed to be marrying Emma the next morning. The next day, just as planned, Emma drove to City Hall for the ceremony. As she stepped out of her car, she called Nathan. His voice on the other end of the line was cold. Amber was injured on stage and needs me. Let's put off the wedding until tomorrow. There will be no tomorrow, Emma thought to herself in disappointment. Walking back to her car, she felt the tears streaming down her face. She groped in her bag for her sunglasses. But then she felt her gaze drawn to a tall figure headed her way. She noticed the fitted navy retro suit, which hugged the masculine body underneath, and the corner of a wine-red handkerchief poking out of the suit's front pocket. The pants fit smoothly over his strong legs, and his polished shoes glistened in the sun. This man had an aura that radiated power, almost like some kind of royalty. As he got closer, even though he was wearing sunglasses, Emma noticed his chiseled face and strong jaw. His full lips were enough to drive any woman crazy. She felt a jolt as she recognized him. He was the CEO of Kaleidoscope Entertainment, Eric Roberts. Back when she was still famous, they'd meet once at a ball. Was he getting married too? Mr. Roberts, Miss Rose hasn't arrived yet. She's ten minutes late, the assistant behind him reported. Call her family and tell them that if they can't be on time for a wedding, they shouldn't bother coming at all, he responded coldly. But your father's insistent that you have to get married today, no matter what, his assistant said timidly. He doesn't care who it is. He's made it clear that he's done waiting for you to settle down. Then just pick someone else for my contact list. I'll give you a half an hour, the man ordered. He also has a dilemma, Emma thought even though it's very different from mine. Eric Roberts had so much power that he could simply choose any woman he wanted. 
Unfortunately, even though he was one of the most eligible bachelors in town, he didn't seem to want anyone in particular. His only priority seemed to be getting his family off his back. Suddenly, an idea came to Emma. Wiping her tears with the sleeve of her dress, she took off her sunglasses and boldly approached the man. Mr. Roberts, your bride hasn't arrived and my groom has abandoned me. Why don't we get married instead? The assistant couldn't believe his ears. How is this woman so daring? Eric removed his sunglasses, revealing a pair of inky dark eyes, the sun glinting off his eyes, making them glimmer like diamonds. After a short moment, he turned to his assistant and ordered, Get me her details. Of course, the assistant already knew who Emma was. He grabbed his cell phone, did a quick search for her name, and showed the information to his boss. Two minutes later, the man's lips twitched ever so slightly as he responded with one word. Okay. Emma felt that meeting Eric was the luckiest thing that could have happened to her. He had no reason to use her. They wouldn't need to spend much time together, and he wouldn't require her to love him. He had no shortage of other women who would sleep with him, so she wouldn't have to worry about fulfilling that part of the marriage. Most importantly, marrying him would make Nathan regret what he'd done. The wedding passed in a blur. In less than 30 minutes, Emma held the marriage certificate in her hands. From now on, she was a wife, and Eric Roberts was her husband. Mr. Roberts, can we talk? Emma asked. Just get in the car first. Eric put his sunglasses back on as he walked out of the building. The newly married couple sat in the back of his Rolls Royce. Emma nervously looked at Eric before saying, Thank you for marrying me. If you need anything from me in return, please let me know. I have two simple requests from you. Well, he responded tiredly as he loosened his collar. First, unless you don't have a choice, please don't reveal our relationship to anyone just yet. Second, I would appreciate it if you don't interfere in my personal matters. But don't worry, I have no intention of having a relationship with another man. Holt gave a slight smirk, and Emma felt his powerful aura sweep through the car. I can promise you those two things for now, but after a six-month trial, I will publicly announce our marriage. That's fine with me, Emma nodded. Also, I don't believe that a married couple should live apart. Take a few days to pack up your belongings, but then I'd like you to move in with me. My assistant, Luke, will be in touch to give you the address. Emma had no objections. She nodded again and said, I agree. After they made their verbal agreement, Emma got out of Eric's car, got into her own, and drove away. Eric's assistant sat in the driver's seat and looked at his boss in the rearview mirror. Mr. Roberts, do you want to return to the office? Or would you like to return to the mansion to give your family the news? Follow Emma and report her every move to me, Eric ordered and stepped out of the car. As the president of an international entertainment agency, he had heard Emma's name before. He remembered that she'd once been a famous model. Three years ago, she had rejected an offer from a top entertainment agency, Star King, and gotten herself blacklisted. Eventually, she had announced that she was signing with Global Pictures Entertainment, and rumors of her relationship with Global's boss, Nathan Davis, had begun to swirl around the industry. Episode 2, Ready for Revenge But Emma's story had only just begun. In all honesty, she had never realized she was so brave. She had actually married a stranger. And what was done was done. There was no point in having regrets. She returned to her car. Just as she was about to start the engine and head home, she received a phone call from Nathan. Emma, where are you right now? Out in front of City Hall, about to go home. Emma replied casually, keeping her voice calm. Amber has a very important show, and I need you to fill in for her right away. I'll tell the makeup artist to provide you with a mask. No one will be able to tell it's you. He was clearly talking to her as her boss, not as her fiancé. Since Amber is injured, you'll have to take this on. Didn't you say that Amber got hurt on stage? If so, the media should already know she's injured. True, but I've told them that she's still going to show up, even with her injuries. 
I've told you what I need you to do, so just do it. He was absolutely shameless. In the past, Emma had done stupid things like this for Amber without even realizing she was being used. But she wasn't going to do it anymore. Emma stayed calm, at least on the outside. She said, Okay, let me know the time and address, and I'll head over there now. Thank you, Emma. You and I are about to get married, and Amber's star is on the rise. You can help give her career a boost. I'll give her a boost for sure, Emma responded, keeping her hidden meaning to herself. I'll hang up then. Let's have dinner later. Nathan had no idea that the tables had turned. He was probably sitting at Amber's bedside right now, tenderly watching over his secret lover. Emma hung up the phone and called her manager. Nathan wants you to stand in for that B-grade model? Yelled Lisa. Is he joking? If you hadn't stepped away from the spotlight, she wouldn't even be working. Lisa, I've already agreed, Emma replied calmly. Are you really going to do this? Lisa was almost spitting in anger. When Emma had stepped back from her career, Lisa had been dragged down with her. Emma knew that Lisa just wanted to stick up for her. You don't need to worry. I won't be stupid. I won't let them use me. Emma, are you saying you have a plan? Lisa, from now on, I'm only trusting you. Can you help me with something? Of course. Amber is desperate to convince the media that she's attending the show because she doesn't want anything to hurt her chances for the Top 10 Model Award. Can you help me by paying a visit to the hospital? I see what you're getting at. You want to prove that she was still at the hospital during the show and reveal it to the public. No, I have bigger news. She's pregnant, and the child is Nathan. I want to tell the media that Nathan has used me over and over to fill in for Amber during her shows, but I need your help finding the evidence. Lisa was surprised at first, but quickly understood what was going on. She thought bitterly, such a shameless couple of cheats and they've been using Emma like a puppet. Don't worry, Emma. You can count on me. Emma felt unusually calm. She was going to treat them like they had treated her. Emma quickly gathered her belongings and drove to the venue for the show to meet with Amber's assistant, Gary, a married man with a muscular physique and a cunning personality. What took you so long? Quick, come and get your makeup done. What type of show is it today? Emma asked as Gary hurried her down the hallway. Nothing special, he replied. On her way there, Emma had done some research on the show. She knew that it was far more than nothing special. In fact, it was a jewelry show for the famous French brand Belle Amé. After this show, Amber would be able to sign on as Belle Amé's spokesperson. Injuries would keep her from this opportunity unless Emma filled in for her. Amber's assistant had lied to her. Had she always been this easy to trick, Emma wondered? Because Amber is doing so well, she has her own makeup room, which you can use. Here's the schedule. You will appear in the grand finale, presenting this piece of jewelry, said Gary, pointing to the piece she would be wearing. Then he ordered the makeup artist to get started. Did Nathan really think that a mask would hide her identity? Although what she had in mind was a little more extreme, Emma was going to give the cheating couple the surprise of their lives. Meanwhile, Eric's assistant, Luke, had been following Emma's every move and overheard that she would be filling in for Amber. He reported back to Robert, who ordered Luke to make arrangements. I'm going to this jewelry show, he said. Make it happen. Yes, Mr. Robert. Eric wanted to see his new wife, in action. In the late morning, classical music was playing throughout the halls of the Brooklyn City Center. The show had begun. Emma's makeup was complete. She was now standing in front of the mirror in the dressing room. Her dress was white, tight-fitting, and long. It was simple, but elegant. Her beautiful golden mask gave off a mysterious aura. With her hair tied back from her face and adorned with a single white rose, she was absolutely stunning. Gary, Amber's assistant, was speechless. Even if Emma stands completely still, he thought, she'll still be the center of attention. Amber will certainly get the contract now. He told Emma, 
You will descend onto the stage on a chair that will be lowered from the rafters. This bracelet is the crown star. Let me put it on you. Gary unclasped the bracelet and carefully put it around Emma's wrist. However, Emma was slimmer than Amber, and the bracelet was too big. With every small movement of her arm, it slid around. The gold bracelet had been designed by the founder of Bellamy for his beloved daughter. A crown encrusted with diamonds was the centerpiece, with a star set on either side of it, like two parents protecting their precious child. It's too big, said Gary in a state of panic. How are you going to wear it? Do you trust me? Emma said. Right now I have no other option, Gary said. In that case, leave it to me, Emma reassured him. Amid all the commotion, the assistant did not notice the glint in Emma's eyes. Episode 3, Suspected of Creating Hype Emma smiled and nodded, then lifted the hem of her dress slightly so that she could move quickly toward the back of the stage. With the mask in place, her face was fully concealed. Her legs, though, were unique. Three years ago, one of Emma's claims to fame had been having the most beautiful legs in the world. Just as everyone thought the show had already reached its climax, Emma descended gracefully to the stage on a chair. The spotlights illuminated her, but the crown star was nowhere to be seen. Whispers ran through the crowd while stylists and assistants frantically started searching for the jewelry that was meant to be the highlight of the show. Forgetting the audience, they even pushed back Emma's sleeves and raised the hem of her gown, displaying her lovely, pale, long legs. Legs so beautiful, they were unforgettable. Just as quickly as the whispers had started, they stopped. Emma elegantly raised her arms, tilted her head back, and lifted her left leg, striking a beautiful dance pose. The crown star appeared from under the white dress, sparkling magnificently around Emma's ankle. Everyone froze in amazement. The sight of Emma leaning back in the chair flowing from one striking pose to the next was mesmerizing. Most impressive of all, with every single pose, she presented the crown star in a different light, showing off its beauty over and over again. The audience rose to their feet and gave Emma a standing ovation. Among the crowd, hidden away at the back, Eric was completely focused on Emma. His new wife, once New York's top model, was in her glory. Standing in for a B-grade model, despite the three years that had passed since her last appearance, she was just as exciting as she'd ever been. She was born for the runway. After Emma's final pose, the show came to a satisfying end. Bellamy's founder, Julius Taylor, was thrilled with her performance and the crowd's reaction. But because he was backstage, he hadn't yet realized that the model on the runway was actually Emma, not Amber Lee. He walked out on stage and approached Emma. He offered his hand to help her off the chair, led her to the head of the runway, and then bowed to the audience. Thank you, everyone, and of course, thank you, Amber, for a spectacular performance. Emma stayed silent, simply responding with an elegant nod of her head. Suddenly, a high-pitched voice said, That isn't Amber. I know Amber, and she doesn't have such long legs. The applause stuttered. The voice called out again, If you Amber, take off your mask. Murmurs of doubt and disbelief multiplied and grew louder as the crowd began to wonder just who this phenomenal model was. Miss Amber, please remove your mask, requested Julia. Emma hesitated but then slowly slid the mask up her face as the audience held their breath. With the mask removed, the crowd immediately recognized her for who she really was. It's Emma Miller! Questions were being murmured all around the room. Emma had been blacklisted after stepping back from her work years ago, but would she really stoop so low as to impersonate another model? Whose idea was this? Was she deliberately creating hype? Or had she been forced to step into this role? Emma! It's actually Emma! 
A swarm of reporters quickly surrounded her, spurring her with questions. Miss Miller, could you please explain what's going on? Amber was supposed to be today's model. Why are you here instead? Miss Miller, you were blacklisted three years ago. Are you trying to take this opportunity to announce a comeback? Miss Miller, are you taking advantage of Amber's injuries to steal her opportunity to represent Bellamy? Emma, are you just trying to create hype? You must have known Amber was injured. The reporter's questions grew more and more intense and some people in the audience began shouting insults. Outdated, cheap has been. Bellamy is Amber's gig, give it back to her. Emma was already beginning to panic under the onslaught when Julius turned on her in fury. I am going to sue Global Pictures for breach of contract. I asked for Amber, not some third rate model. He had no idea just how famous Emma had been three years ago. All he knew was that this controversy was ruining his show. I'll see you in court, he snarled at Emma. Get out of here. You do not deserve to be standing on my runway. His sharp voice echoed through the building, temporarily quieting even the reporters. But Emma couldn't move. She had prepared herself for this moment, but the humiliation still stung. Go on, get lost. Then... From the end of the stage, a deep voice cut through her shock. Well, it's clear that someone needs to get lost. Everyone turned to look for the source of the authoritative voice. There, standing at the edge of the stage, was Eric Roberts, the CEO of Kaleidoscope Entertainment. Everyone knew that Eric Roberts despised the games and the drama that the modeling industry was known for. People started wondering whether he was about to drag Emma off the stage. The entire hall seemed to be holding its breath, waiting for the axe to fall. A whoosh of surprise sounded as Roberts walked over to Emma and stood next to her. With the commanding tone of a man used to being in charge, he turned to Julius and said, She's not the one that should get lost. You are. Your manners, it would appear, are not nearly as polished as your jewelry. Emma's heart stopped for a moment. Who would have thought that her new husband, a man she'd only just met for the third time, would stand up for her like that? The reporters were stunned and began to worry. If they'd known earlier that Emma had ties with Eric Roberts, they would never have been so rude. Julius Taylor knew he could not afford to offend the CEO of Kaleidoscope Entertainment. After a few moments of silence, he reluctantly said, my apologies, Mr. Roberts. I didn't know about your relationship with... I have no relationship with her, Eric responded. I'm simply disgusted with your behavior. Eric began to walk away, but then turned back and announced, Mark my words, this woman will be a star in the modeling industry again. Episode 4, The Hidden Marriage the media were in a frenzy. What does Eric Roberts mean by this? Does he intend to sign Emma Miller? Is this some kind of joke? Whatever the explanation, the reporters no longer dared to focus on Emma. Instead, they shifted the blame to Global Pictures. Global's troubles began and, at first, Amber Lee's assistant received the blame. If he couldn't even handle such a small matter, what else would he do wrong? Emma seemed unfazed by the uproar, maintaining an expression of unruffled calm. She changed her clothes and left the event. As she stepped out of the side door, she spotted Eric Roberts' sports car waiting for her. Get in quickly, he said. Emma got in the car. She was exceptionally grateful for what he had done. Thank you for today. Eric's eyes slightly narrowed as he smirked. Did you think I would allow someone to bully my wife in front of everyone? Actually, I didn't deserve your help. I intentionally allowed everyone to figure out who I really was, she explained unapologetically. He looked her straight in the eyes. I know, but you should have asked me for help. Sacrificing yourself to get back at someone is a bit self-destructive, don't you think? Maybe. Where should I drop you off? Your home. Aren't we a married couple now? Emma replied. Since she had made the decision to get married, she was not going to go back on her word, nor feel any regret. Are you sure? Not only are we married, but 
Tonight is our wedding night. Emma blushed, but nodded firmly. I am very thankful that you didn't reveal our relationship, but from now on, I insist that you stay neutral. I want to rely on myself to do what needs to be done. Eric did not protest. He enjoyed the idea of a woman who did not want to use him as a stepping stone to her own advancement. He decided to sit back and see what Emma could accomplish. The couple set off. Not long after, Emma received a phone call from her manager, Lisa. Emma, I've already found evidence of Amber's pregnancy. What do you want me to do with it? Also, the scene you caused at the show today has gone viral. People are really turning against you online. What's the plan? Lisa, are you willing to stick with me? Do you even have to ask? Lisa replied. Would you really expect me to pick that cheating couple over you? Then release the statement that I asked you to prepare earlier. But I need to be clear. By doing this, you'll be going up against Global Pictures. I'm not afraid, Lisa exclaimed. We should have done this sooner. I'll prep the post now and release it before Nathan Davis has a chance to put something out first. Emma hung up, and a peaceful silence settled in the car. But deep down, Emma was nervous. What did Eric think of her? I... She began to speak, but Eric interrupted. No need to explain. I heard your conversation just now. I heard it all. But I have one question. Have you always been this honest? They had pulled up at a red light, and Eric took the opportunity to reach out and gently turn her face toward him so he could examine her with his eagle-like gaze. I'll always be honest with you, and I really mean that, Emma said, revealing her loyalty. I don't want you to misunderstand what's going on and think badly of me. Eric was taken aback for a moment, but then he said, If I were you, I would take things even further. He must have guessed by now what was going on between Emma, Amber, and Nathan. His offer of support deepened Emma's appreciation for her new husband. She vowed to herself that, no matter what, she would remember that day and the promises she made to Eric forever. Meanwhile, Nathan was reeling in disbelief from receiving the news of Emma's exposure on stage. At this same moment, he received a call from Justin Taylor, notifying him of Bellamy's intention to take Global Pictures Entertainment to court for breach of contract. In an instant, Global had gotten itself into a heap of trouble, and rumors were spreading across the internet like wildfire. Amber, focused on the video of Emma's performance on stage, pulled Nathan towards her. Look, she wanted to be recognized. She knows the biggest difference between us is our legs. She did it on purpose. Amber, Emma isn't like that. And you know it's not the first time she stood in for you. So, what you're saying is that you trust her? Don't be stupid, Nathan. Someone's going to have to take the blame for all this. Do you really want to lose the Bellamy contract? Do you want to tell everyone that you were the one who asked Emma to stand in for me? If you do that, it'll be the end for us. What are you suggesting? For the sake of global pictures, you need to make an announcement. You need to tell everyone that you were completely unaware of any of this. And the whole thing was just Emma trying to create hype. You can say that's why she went behind our backs and pretended to be me. I guess, under the circumstances... That's all we can do, Nathan nodded in agreement. But as he was about to pick up the phone to contact Global's head of PR, he received a call from his assistant. Quick, Mr. Davis, check the headlines. Emma's manager has just broken a story. Nathan quickly jumped online to search the news feed. To his disbelief, he saw that Emma's manager was already a step ahead of them. She had revealed that Nathan had forced Emma to stand in for Amber multiple times over the past three years. She had even posted pictures of the two models as proof and had claimed that Emma had been bullied for many years. Seething with anger, Nathan contacted Emma's manager. Lisa, are you crazy? Lisa's laughter resounded on the other end of the call. She calmly responded, I wanted to leave your lousy company for a long time and hung up the phone. Nathan, this is definitely Emma's doing, Amber said. Quick, we need to cover it up somehow. Nathan immediately started contacting his connections in the media. 
who quickly had them prioritizing posting the announcement he had prepared earlier, alleging that Emma was just trying to grab the spotlight. In no time at all, Emma and Global Pictures Entertainment were trending. No one was aware of the relationship between Emma and Eric Roberts, and no one was brave enough to risk offending Nathan Davis. So at first, Emma was definitely on the wrong side of public opinion, attracting an avalanche of hateful comments. Just as it started to look like her reputation had been damaged beyond repair, the term Emma Stand-In jumped to the top of search rankings. Search results were all leading to the news Lisa had released earlier, that Emma was the real victim. Lisa's story had come out first, and the online community made their own decisions. On top of everything else, the fact that Emma had filled in for Amber so many times without causing any trouble and was still being used became the deciding factor. Opinion turned strongly in Emma's favor. In disbelief, Nathan picked up his phone and contacted his PR team, ordering them to spend however much it took to discredit Emma and bury her news. Meanwhile, Eric was on calls with his contacts. If Emma's name disappears from the search rankings, you and your company are done. Episode 5, Wedding Night The media couldn't afford to get on the wrong side of Kaleidoscope Entertainment, even though they didn't understand why Eric Roberts' company would be helping Emma. Even Lisa didn't understand why their plan had run so smoothly. She expected it to take at least a few days. Emma, tell me, are you getting support from another company? No, Emma replied as she glanced the man beside her. There is someone who's been helping me behind the scenes, but I can't reveal who he is yet. Okay, we'll talk about it later. Just the thought of Nathan's distraught face is enough to keep me going for now. Lisa assumed Emma was getting help from her family. Like everyone else, she had no idea that Emma had, in fact, suddenly become the wife of Eric Roberts, the king of entertainment. Are you trying to use this opportunity to leave Global? Eric asked once he and Emma had sat down to dinner at a classy hotel restaurant. No, that would be letting them off too easy. I'm going to tear them down, he said with relish. Plus, I've decided to properly get back to modeling. I'm not as well known in the industry as I used to be, so Global may still be of some use. You're thinking like this right now because you're angry. What if one day you don't hate Nathan anymore? I've made my decision and I won't regret it, let alone turn back, Emma said firmly. When she was in love, she would love with all her heart. When she hated someone, she wanted to tear them apart with her bare hands. On top of everything else, Emma was angry that Nathan hadn't even called to check in on her. Instead, he'd just gone ahead and released news that could easily ruin her. There was no way she was going to let him hurt her again. Eric remained silent, but he was very intrigued by his new wife. Emma wasn't stupid. In fact, she was very smart. She knew she couldn't hide anything from Eric, so she decided to reveal everything to him. Good or bad, there was no holding back. All that existed was trust. Eric said, I've asked my assistant to arrange a room in this hotel. Tonight, we'll stay here. My house is no fun. Emma's ears flushed red as she nodded. That's up to you. Meanwhile, Nathan was calling everyone he knew, trying to smooth things over with the media and his business partners. That, coupled with the news of Amber's pregnancy, was enough to drive any thought of Emma's well-being from his mind. After a romantic dinner, Eric took Emma's hand and led her to the hotel's penthouse. She was shocked to see that it wasn't just a regular penthouse. It was the wedding suite. Even under such hectic conditions, he'd somehow managed to have this arranged. She couldn't help but feel touched by his consideration. She was still nervous, though, and Eric could sense it. He took off his suit jacket as he turned to her and said, 
I'll have a shower first, so you can have some time to make a decision. There's no pressure. If you're not sure, we can put off any official wedding night activities until another time, if and when you feel ready. She felt grateful for his thoughtfulness as she watched him head into the bathroom. But after all, they were already married. He was a good man, and there was no denying the attraction she felt for him. Finally making her decision, she pushed the door open and joined Eric in the bathroom. He looked at her in surprise as she stepped into the shower, fully dressed, and embraced him. I have no regrets about marrying you. Are you sure? His deep voice was sexy enough to strike a chord in anyone's heart. I'm absolutely certain. Hearing her response, Eric allowed himself to act on his feelings. With one hand, he grabbed her by the waist and pressed his lips against hers. With the other, he undid her dress, which was now soaking wet. Emma's senses were buzzing. She'd never experienced a kiss like this before. It felt so magical that she was losing control. Standing under the shower, she looked up at her husband's face. Completely mesmerized, she examined his face. She noticed the diamond-shaped mole on his earlobe and his passionate eyes that looked like they could draw her into his soul. Unable to wait any longer, Eric pulled Emma out of the shower wrapped her in a towel, and scooped her up in his arms to carry her out to the rose petal-covered bed. He put on protection and lay down on top of her. But just as he was about to enter her, he felt an obstruction. Emma cried out in pain. Eric pulled back quickly and wrapped her in the blanket. He'd assumed, since Emma was in the entertainment industry and in a relationship with Nathan, that this couldn't possibly be her first time. But the feeling just now made him quite sure that she had never engaged in sexual activity before. What's wrong? Emma noticed Eric had stopped and couldn't help but lift her head up to question him, her face blushing attractively. Let's wait for another time. He felt bad for having misunderstood her. If I'd continued, I would have hurt you. He put on his robe and returned to the bed, trying to control his desires. He didn't want her first time to be bad. Why didn't you tell me you had no experience? I didn't know how to bring it up, she responded as she huddled up against his shoulder. He rose, lifting her up and headed back to the bathroom. Are you hurt? Looking at the worried expression on his face, she couldn't help but let out a laugh. You are nothing like the outside world portrays you. What did you think I would be like? He placed her gently into the bathtub and turned on some water. A dictator with complete control over the life and death of his entertainers. A person with no humanity. Well, to other people, I am like that. But you're different. Since you're my wife and you're so trusting of me, I'll show you my true self. But Emma, I must warn you, to me, a lie is a lie. If you betray me, I will never forgive you. She sat up, her nose almost touching his. What a coincidence. I feel the same way. That night, their physical relationship was only beginning, but their hearts had drawn closer together. The next morning, Emma awoke to the blinding light of the sun shining through the window. To her surprise, the spot beside her in bed was empty. She thought Eric had already left, but she found him waiting for her in the living room while flipping through some documents. I ordered some new clothes for you. We'll leave as soon as you're ready. She nodded as she turned toward the bathroom. At that moment, her phone rang. It was Nathan. Emma looked at Eric awkwardly as he charmingly lifted one eyebrow and asked, do you want me to pick it up? Episode 6 Facing Nathan Of course not. The time isn't right. Eric picked up the phone and handed it to Emma, who put the call on speakerphone. Emma, where are you right now? Nathan asked. 
I was afraid the reporters would find me, so I found a place to hide, she answered calmly. So you don't know what Lisa did? Nathan asked in disbelief. What did Lisa do? I don't have good Wi-Fi here, so I haven't been keeping up with the news. What happened? Emma tried to sound curious. Thanks to your manager, Global Entertainment is in crisis. I need you to get back to the office right now to prepare for a press conference. I'm counting on you to clear Global's name. Press conference, she thought. That's just going to be another opportunity for him to pin the blame on me. All right, she said, tired of the whole business. I'm on my way. As she hung up, Eric looked at her with concern and said, I put my number in your phone. Anytime you need me, just call. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. You can't call me that anymore. I'm your husband, he said, pulling Emma onto his lap. Call me something else, or I won't let you go. She blushed and whispered shyly, My husband. A rare smile appeared on his face. Come on, I'll drop you off at Global's offices. Remember what you promised, he said lightly. Don't get too close to another man. She responded with a reassuring smile and his heart skipped a beat. Eric drove Emma to Global Entertainment's offices. As the king of entertainment, he knew how destructive the industry could be. As Emma's new husband, he wanted to see if she could turn the tables on Nathan and Amber and reclaim her position as a top model. After stepping out of the car, she entered the building through a private walkway. As soon as the staff spotted her, they began whispering to each other. All of them were sure Lisa had been acting on Emma's orders. Pretending not to notice them, she knocked on the door of Nathan's office and then pushed it open. You're back, Nathan turned to her, holding back his anger. Tell me what happened with Lisa, she responded. Emma, are you sure you don't know? Nathan threw a newspaper down in front of her. If you didn't tell her to make this statement, who did? Nathan, we're about to get married. Why would I do something that would hurt you? Emma almost choked on her words as she looked at him innocently. Then how do you explain putting that bracelet on your ankle? You know very well the biggest difference between you and Amber is your legs. Emma just looked steadily at Nathan as he interrogated her. She thought back to the many times he had protected Amber. She thought he was acting to promote his own career. But now, it seemed that he'd wanted to help Amber all along. I couldn't wear the crown star anywhere but my ankle. Amber's assistant, Gary, was there. Ask him. I did ask him. He said you made the decision yourself, Nathan pressed on. But why would you believe him and not me? Emma faked a look of disappointment as she continued to observe Nathan's reaction. Look, the damage is done, Nathan said. And now Bellamy is threatening to sue us for breach of contract. Thanks to your manager, the public has turned against us, too. You need to fix this. I can't have this incident hurting my career. Emma, for the sake of global entertainment, you have to step up and explain to everyone that your manager created this mess to grab the spotlight, and global had nothing to do with it. Saying that my manager was responsible is the same as saying I was responsible. You were the one who called me to stand in for Amber at the last minute, Emma cried. Why should I be sacrificed? Because being recognized was clearly your fault. As soon as those words left his mouth, he must have felt that he had gone too far. He forced himself to calm down and reached out to hug Emma, but she just pushed him away. Emma, maybe I was a bit impatient, but please, just this once, okay? After we're married, I promise you this will never happen again. She held back her tears and nodded. All right, I'll do the press conference, but you should know that I'm doing this for you and your career, and there better not be a next time. Yes, I promise there will be no next time. In fact, Nathan was confident Emma would fall for this kind of stunt again and again. That was just the kind of person she was, and once they were married, he would be able to control her even more easily. The press conference will be this afternoon at three. We'll be meeting soon to go over your script. Emma stopped crying and forced herself to look into Nathan's eyes, as if she still loved him. But as soon as she left the room, her gaze turned cold. She couldn't get out of it this time, but she would never take the blame for Nathan's messes again. 
As soon as she returned to her office, she called her manager. Lisa, Nathan is trying to use me. Of course he is. Tell me what I can do, Lisa responded, ready to fight. At 3 p.m., I'm going to announce that I created this mess and then apologize to Global and the public. But right after that, I want you to anonymously release the photos of Nathan and Amber together at the hospital. You got it. I even thought up a great headline. Exposed. Global Entertainment's boss's affair. He's a big cheating piece of scum. Emma couldn't help laughing, but then she began to apologize. I'm so sorry for dragging you into this. Emma, as long as you're willing to fight, I'll help you do anything you want. And not only that, I'm planning to turn you into an international supermodel. Super. Episode 7, Nathan is Ruthless. International supermodel? Emma repeated to herself. She'd never allowed herself to dream that big. And for now, she just wanted to focus on the present and make Amber and Nathan suffer the consequences of their actions. Just before the press conference at Global Entertainment, Nathan surprised Emma by taking her to lunch at an elegant restaurant in their office building. He even ordered a gorgeous arrangement of red roses for the table. But she just looked blankly at the beautifully set table, not even smiling. I ordered your favorite, sirloin steak, he said, as if offering her a prize. She couldn't believe her ears. After dating for five years, Nathan still didn't know what she liked to eat. What's wrong? he asked. Before she could respond, the chef approached the table with their meals and said, Miss Miller, I'm pleased to present you with your favorite dish, filet mignon. On behalf of Frederick's Restaurant, congratulations on your marriage. Pointing to her plate, Nathan quietly said to Emma, Wait, is this really your favorite? Emma ignored Nathan and spoke directly to the chef. Thank you, but we aren't married yet, and I'm so impressed that you remembered what I liked. The chef acknowledged her words with a nod and a smile and left them to their meal. Emma turned back to Nathan. We should eat. We still need to get back to the office and discuss the script. Inside, she felt like screaming, but she kept her composure. Just then, she received a text from Eric with the heading 0819. 0819, August 19th. That's the date of our wedding, she thought. The filet mignon is from me. The chef was referring to our wedding. Emma smiled to herself and typed her response under the table. How did you know I was here? I have my ways of finding out, Eric responded. She glanced around the restaurant, but couldn't spot Eric. How had he organized something so thoughtful? Even though she couldn't see him, she could sense his powerful presence. Emma, what are you looking at? Nathan asked, waving his hand in front of her face. Oh, nothing. She shook her head and calmly changed the topic. Nathan, when are we actually getting married? After all this commotion has settled down, he answered. You do realize that the Top Ten Model Award could be Amber's big break. She's so lucky to have your help. Otherwise, her career could be in ruin. He poured them both some wine and raised his glass to hers. I'll help you both get what you deserve. Emma smiled sweetly at Nathan, taking full advantage of her charming dimples. But he didn't notice her beauty or hear the hidden meaning in her words. His thoughts were with Amber. He had totally succumbed to her allure and could think of nobody else. After the press conference, I need you to call your manager, he told Emma brusquely. We're going to have to take legal action against her. All right, Emma responded. But there was no way she was going to let him retaliate against Lisa. By the time they finished their lunch, reporters from all areas of the media were waiting at the global offices to hear what Emma had to say. Since retreating from the public eye, her name had all but disappeared. Today was the perfect opportunity to do a little digging into her life. Emma approached the podium and reached for the microphone. The reporters began shouting over each other, each wanting to be called on first. Emma, your name is trending everywhere. You're topping the search rankings. How much did you pay for that? 
Emma, are you jealous of Amber's place in the spotlight? Miss Miller, did you create this scandal just to get attention? Finally, Emma cleared her throat and got everyone's attention and began to speak. I want to apologize for damaging Global Entertainment's reputation and casting doubt on Amber Lee's integrity. At the Bellamy show, I decided to appear on stage and display the bracelet. That decision was mine alone. The goal was to stir up attention and regain my place in the spotlight. Neither Global Entertainment nor my manager had a part in this plot. The responsibility is mine alone. Thank you all for coming. The reporters went completely silent. They'd never seen a celebrity admit wrongdoing so readily and in such a straightforward manner. Emma thought that the press conference was now over, but before she could turn away, she heard Nathan ask Global's creative director to come to the podium. This was not the first time Miss Miller has behaved this way, he said, obviously coached by Nathan, but we are willing to give her one final chance. Emma, I hope you've learned from your mistakes and that we can trust you not to repeat them again. Emma couldn't believe her ears. Not the first time, she repeated to herself. Nathan, you are ruthless. But, true to her word, she remained silent and left the podium. Just like that, the internet blew up with hateful comments. The public was furious with Emma. At Kaleidoscope Entertainment, Eric overheard his staff gossiping about the press conference. He turned to his assistant, who filled him in on the events of the afternoon. Mr. Roberts, Luke asked, do you want to try and help Emma? Not just yet. I want to see how she deals with it, Eric replied. He had helped her before, but this time he would stand back and see what she could do. He hoped his new wife would show the world just what she was capable of. Episode 8, Heading to the Hospital Emma's announcement that she took full responsibility for the Bellamy fiasco cleared Global's name. Bellamy accepted her apology and believed her when she said she'd acted independently. They even decided to make Amber their spokesperson, as originally planned. Amber's popularity was expected to skyrocket. Global Entertainment, Nathan, and Amber recovered from the incident completely. Emma, however, saw her reputation destroyed. Queen of height scheming model, and other, even less flattering hashtags appeared in connection with her name, and the internet was flooded with hateful comments. She tried to remain calm. She knew that the higher Nathan and Amber climbed now, the harder they would fall. But for now, even the office cleaner at Global was giving her a hard time. Miss Miller, could you please move your pretty legs? Can't you see I'm trying to clean up here? Why are you even coming into the office? It's not like you have a show coming up. My back hurts cleaning up after you. Emma's expression turned cold. Even though she had fallen to a low point in her career, it didn't mean she would allow everyone to bully her. She didn't want to make things difficult for the staff, but she had to start standing up for herself. She called Nathan on speakerphone so the cleaner would hear their conversation. Nathan, have I sunk so low that even the office cleaner can bully me? Get her name and tell HR to fire her, Nathan snapped. And after that, come to my office. We'll discuss our next steps. Emma hung up the phone and looked up at the cleaner coldly. Even if I'm no longer a model, you can't talk to me like dirt. I'll let this go for now, but don't let it happen again. The cleaner's face turned pale and she broke out in a cold sweat. She hadn't expected Emma to stand up for herself. I'm sorry, Miss Miller. It won't happen again. Emma knocked on Nathan's office door and entered the room. Emma, your reputation is in shreds, but I've made some arrangements for you to start to redeem yourself. You can start by visiting Amber and show some concern for her to show you're sorry. Maybe you can get some sympathy votes that way. You don't have to mean it. Just put on a show in front of the cameras for a few minutes and we'll broadcast the visit live. Nathan had actually thought Emma would refuse to humiliate herself like this. But she surprised him and nodded in agreement. So you'll do it? Yes, she answered. I haven't had the chance to visit Amber since she got hurt. This is the perfect opportunity. 
In that case, I'll get you an escort. There's a swarm of reporters outside. Luke was waiting outside with the car. On the way to the hospital, Emma messaged Eric. Don't worry about the news you're about to see. I'm on my way to the hospital to visit Amber, but I have a plan. And I want to come home to you tonight. Can you send someone to pick me up from the hospital? I don't even know where my new home is. Eric received Emma's message while he was in the middle of a meeting. For the first time that anyone could remember, he paused mid-sentence to respond to the text, causing everyone in the room to look around at each other in surprise. They were all intensely curious about who could possibly be so important to merit a response when he usually never interrupted a meeting to answer a text or a call. Eric ignored their reaction and sent his reply. Good for you. I'm looking forward to seeing you later. I'll pick you up myself. Emma couldn't help but smile when she received Eric's reply. Nathan's assistant noticed her in the rearview mirror. You can smile all you want, but just wait till you find out what's coming your way, he thought. Emma knew the whole world was currently against her, but she forced herself to put it out of her mind and send a message to her manager. Nathan has arranged for me to see Amber at the hospital. I'm almost there. Are you ready? Anyone with half a brain could tell Amber is using this as an opportunity to humiliate you, Lisa replied. I've been ready for ages, and I'm sure the public will enjoy what I have to share. There's pictures and a video. Go ahead and release the pictures, but keep the video for later. I want to give Nathan and Amber some time to argue it out first. Got it. We'll wait for the right time. When they're at their worst, I'll release the video and watch the pieces fall. Lisa, just please be careful. Emma immediately deleted the records of the text from her phone and smiled to herself once more. In her private hospital room, Amber was sitting up comfortably in bed. Her eyes sparkled at the thought of being able to humiliate Emma. Never in her wildest dreams had she thought Emma would be so stupid as to take all the blame. She'd increased Amber's recognition and even helped her secure the spokesperson deal with Bellamy. Amber, Emma is almost here, said her assistant Gary. When she arrives, the cameras will run for a three-minute live broadcast. In just a moment, I'll ask the doctor to come in and change your bandages. At the same time, I'll ask Emma to help you wash your feet. Amber had been overshadowed by Emma for so long. From this point on, she vowed she would climb higher and higher. She was going to step all over Emma, take Nathan from her, and become the first lady of global entertainment. This is going to be great. From now on, things will only keep getting better for you, Gary said. For one thing, the annual Top Ten Model Awards Committee is about to make their selection, and I know you'll be selected. You'll be one step closer to becoming a real superstar. Amber slowly smiled. This was better than anything she had ever dared to imagine. With everything going her way, her arrogance began to grow. Episode 9, I'll Never Apologize to You Emma entered the hospital, escorted only by Nathan's assistant. She would have to face Amber without the support of her own team. Gary, Amber's assistant, was guarding the door. So you're here to apologize, he said, looking her up and down with a sneer. You'll just have to wait. Amber's resting. Emma looked Gary straight in the eyes. With a deceptively calm voice, she said, How dare you talk to me like that? Before he could respond, Amber called out from the room. Is that Emma? Come in, Emma. Amber was annoyed with Gary. Right now was not the time to be rude to her. And she still had the power of her family behind her, even if they no longer paid as much attention to her as they had when she was famous. Emma held her head high and walked into the room, not sparing another glance for Gary. Amber, how are you? Nathan told me we're going to film a live broadcast. Isn't that exciting, Emma? I'm so happy to help you show the world how sorry you are. Emma hesitated for a moment. She honestly couldn't believe how shameless Amber was. She was almost as bad as Nathan. They all knew he had asked Emma to fill in at the Bellamy show, but they were all still trying to pretend that it had been Emma's idea. We already prepared this scene, Gary said. In just a moment, the doctor will come in to change Amber's bandages. 
You'll have the opportunity to show how sorry you are by helping Amber wash her feet. That's enough, Emma snapped. We all know what really happened. Don't you think it's time we stop pretending you're innocent? Emma, what are you talking about? I don't understand, said Amber, opening her eyes wide. I can't believe my ears. If it wasn't for Nathan, I wouldn't put up with this. You know all this is your doing. Emma, it's bad enough you won't apologize to me. Do you have to be mean to me when I've done nothing wrong? Amber really was a good actor, even managing to look hurt as she maintained her innocence. Apologize to you? I'm never going to apologize to you. I have nothing to apologize for, Emma said. Unfortunately, she didn't realize that Gary was recording the whole scene. He immediately posted the video online with an attention-grabbing tagline. Attention-seeking disgraced model declares, I'm never going to apologize to you. In an instant, the wave of hate rose again, ready to come crashing down on Emma. Gary kept recording as Emma left the room. This time, Emma really has gone too far. Amber summoned up tears for the camera. Not only did she refuse to apologize, she even had the nerve to say it was all my fault. And that was when the war between the models really sparked off. Global quickly released a statement apologizing to the public and implying that they intended to release Emma from their contract with her. No one would have believed that Emma's career could possibly recover from that last devastating blow. But, just as it seemed that things could never get better, a collection of photos surfaced online with the caption, No apology necessary. Emma was wronged. The photo showed Amber and Nathan embracing and kissing passionately in Amber's hospital bed, with Amber wearing a skimpy hospital gown. No one could mistake the images for something innocent. His hand could be seen grasping her bare leg, while her hand was wrapped around the back of his neck bringing him closer. The text posted with the photos exposed the whole story of Amber and Nathan cheating on Emma for months and manipulating her into filling in for Amber. And just like that, the truth was out. Amber and Nathan's intimate photos spread everywhere, along with the truth that Emma had acted honorably all along. Public opinion swung back 180 again. Emma, who had given up her career for love, had never once tried to make excuses for herself. She was so noble that she'd even taken full responsibility for the Bellamy incident. The tables had turned once again, but Amber did not know it yet. She was in her hospital room, in the middle of yet another interview. Just as she was saying how she actually felt sorry for Emma, the reporter's phone dinged. Miss Lee, she said, how do you explain these photos? Amber's face turned pale. What are those? She asked in horror. These appear to be intimate photos of you and Nathan Davis. Do you want me to go into more detail about what you're doing in the photos? Amber froze. A moment ago, she had everyone's sympathy. Now, everyone knew she had seduced someone else's fiancé. Her mind went blank. How could you possibly get out of this situation? No, it's all fake. This must be part of Emma's plan. Don't film me anymore. Just get out. Go. Miss Lee, the reporter said, just when I thought I'd seen everything in the entertainment industry, you've still managed to shock me. I'm going to tell you this. There is still some justice in the world. I'm never going to write another negative word about Emma Miller. Amber began trembling. As soon as the reporters left, she called Nathan. Nathan, have you seen the photos? What should we do? It's just some photos. Don't panic. I'm working on a solution, he responded calmly. But inside, he wasn't calm at all. Not only was Amber's future at risk, the whole of Global was in trouble as well. And perhaps worst of all, he realized, he could lose Emma forever. Emma must be behind all this, Amber said shrilly. Well, maybe if you'd been nicer to her, this wouldn't have happened. Nathan answered angrily and hung up. He tried to call Emma right away, but her phone kept ringing out to voicemail. Emma was holding her phone and watching it ring. She was imagining how anxious Nathan must be, and she decided to let him 
do a little longer. Emma, I'm outside the back entrance. She hadn't let Eric's call go to voicemail. The second she heard his deep voice, all her uneasiness fled. As she got in the car, her phone continued to ring and ring, but she ignored it and threw it into the back seat. You're not going to pick up? Eric asked, turning his handsome face to her. You already know the answer, Emma smirked. She planned to make Nathan look for her all night long. Episode 10, Payback Begins. Eric stopped talking and focused on the road. Meanwhile, Emma focused on the birthmark on his earlobe. It made him look like he was born with an earring, giving him his slightly evil and dangerous aura. Why are you looking at me like that? He asked. Is there dirt on my face? Emma reached out for Eric's arm. Before we go to our new home, could you come with me somewhere? Of course, but after that, are you interested in finishing what we started last night? Eric's tone was casual, but Emma couldn't hide her nervousness. She wasn't sure she felt as confident as she had the previous night. Eric didn't pressure her, though. He just continued to drive and enjoy the touch of her hand on his arm. At Emma's request, they headed to a park known for its beautiful cherry blossom trees and wonderful restaurants. Emma and Nathan had met at the park frequently, or at least had often made plans to meet there. Finally answering Nathan's call, she said, I'm heading to the Cherry Blossom Park. Meet me under our favorite tree as soon as you can. I'm on my way, Nathan said immediately. Even though he was having an affair with Amber, he had never intended to stop seeing Emma. Where would he find another woman who was so easy to manipulate? He appreciated her loyalty, her family background, and her easygoing nature. He would be foolish to let her go. Emma hung up and looked at Eric. I have no love left for Nathan, she said. Without a word, he patted the seat beside him, gesturing for Emma to sit. The two of them looked out the window at the scenery below. Not long after, an anxious figure appeared beneath her favorite cherry blossom tree. Nathan had arrived. She had stood under that tree so many times, naively waiting all day for him to show up. Most of the time, she had waited in vain. She couldn't believe how badly she let him treat her. He had stood her up, toyed with her, and then betrayed her. But now, it was his turn to suffer. Will this make you feel better? Eric asked as the two of them continued to look at the sad figure below. It's a start. I want him to experience everything he made me go through. The big things and the small ones. With long, powerful fingers, Eric reached for Emma's chin. Turning her face to his, he saw a woman who was delicate on the outside, but had an inner core of steel. I ordered foie gras, she said. The waiter said it was quite good. Eric released her from his grasp and let out a surprised smile. How did you know that I liked that? I have my ways, she said. Emma gestured for the waiter to start serving. Let's eat while we chat. Eric looked at her pink, soft, luscious lips. His gaze held a trace of danger. I don't want to chat. I just want to kiss you. Nathan remained standing along under the tree while Emma and Eric enjoyed their meal and their glances. She might look unassuming, but she isn't weak, he thought. Time passed quickly for the couple as Nathan continued to wait outside. He kept calling Emma, but she had turned her phone off. Finally, the two finished their meal. Eric took a last glance down at Nathan and asked, Do you want to continue watching him wait? No, I want you to help me move into your house. Eric paid the bill, escorted Emma out through the side door, and drove her to her home. She'd asked for five minutes alone in the house to remove all traces of her relationship with Nathan. To be honest, there wasn't much. Nathan had never left any of his belongings there. While she packed, Eric looked around. He found a huge photo in the living room of Emma receiving a modeling trophy. If she hadn't retreated from the industry, he thought, she would have been an international superstar by now. A few minutes later, she emerged from her bedroom with a teddy bear and a small bag. I'm ready. You don't want anything else? No, let's leave the memories behind. 
Eric took the bag and the teddy bear and placed them on the sofa. Then he took her into his arms and kissed her passionately. At first, Emma was surprised, but then she closed her eyes and returned his kiss. But when her hands began to slide along his ribcage, he said, Let's leave the rest for when we get home. But for now, has my kiss helped you to make some better final memories here? Back at the park, Nathan waited for four hours. He had planned to stay all night if that's what it took, but then Amber called. Nathan, where are you? I'm waiting outside your house. I need you. Why are those photos of us still all over the web? I'm going to be destroyed. Nathan rushed home. Seeing Amber standing pitifully on one foot outside his door, he couldn't help but run to her. I won't let you be destroyed, and I won't let Global be destroyed. Nathan, you're all I have. Don't leave me and the baby. Nathan tried his best to comfort and reassure her. That night, he ordered his staff to release a statement saying that the pictures of the two of them that had been posted earlier in the day were misleading. The truth, so the statement said, was that Amber had been standing on one foot due to her injury and had lost her balance. She had fallen into Nathan's arms and they had landed on the bed together. Episode 11, A Cure for Hatred after Global's PR team released their statement, Nathan paid a few social influencers to post glowing reviews of his company and of Amber. Over the next three days, he contacted everyone he could think of to clean up Amber's image and to cast blame on Emma. He could only hope that the public would soon forget his latest scandal and Amber would be able to return to work. His goal was to position Amber to win the Top 10 Model Award and then announced she would be leaving the country to study. She could have her child away from the prying eyes of the public. Nathan really was infatuated with Amber, so he was willing to go to great lengths to make this plan work. And once she was acknowledged as a top model, she would be very profitable for global entertainment. Emma's manager read through the latest global press release with a shake of her head. She'd come over to Emma's apartment to plan their next move but was surprised to find that Emma wasn't home. Feeling confused, she called Emma. Where are you? Emma had just started filling the tub at Eric's house. She laughed and said, I haven't had the chance to tell you. I moved. Where did you move to? Does Nathan know? Emma turned around and looked at Eric, who had just entered the bathroom. Not realizing she was on the phone, he said in that deep, sexy voice of his, Is it bath time yet? On the other side of the line, Lisa heard the voice and asked in disbelief, Who are you with? Are you safe? Is someone taking advantage of your situation? Beginning to sound frantic, she said, You don't need to rely on some strange man to take care of you. Tell me where you are and I'll come get you right now. Emma didn't know what to say. She put her phone on mute and said, My manager seems to think I need help. I'd like to talk with her in person and explain what's going on. Do you trust her completely? Eric had already found out quite a lot about Lisa. He knew that she was passionate and loyal, but scatterbrained at times. Of course. Then let me send someone to pick her up and bring her here. Emma thought about it carefully and then told Lisa she would send a car for her. Lisa paced back and forth while she waited. What on earth was going on? Had Emma willingly gone off with some other man? Was it someone in the entertainment industry? Didn't she know how dangerous that was? They all wanted the same thing. One night of fun to be forgotten about the next day. Lisa was fuming by the time Luke, Eric's assistant, arrived. Please get in the car. I'm here to take you to see Emma. Lisa didn't recognize Luke and wasn't feeling very friendly. If anything has happened to Emma, I will do some serious physical harm to you and your boss, she threatened. Then she jabbed him in the belly with her elbow. The sudden pain made it hard for Luke to answer. Let's not talk about who's going to hurt who. Just get in the car. Lisa glared at Luke as she got in the car and kept glaring throughout the ride, keeping up a steady stream of threats about what would happen if even one hair on Emma's head had been harmed. But as the car approached one of the most expensive streets in Tribeca, 
Lisa grew silent in shock. Just who the hell is your boss? She said weakly. You'll find out once you get inside, he replied in an annoyed tone. He could have a bit of a temper, too. Lisa started to worry. She'd have to be very careful. Whoever lived there probably had a lot of power to go along with their money. Luke escorted Lisa out of the car and led her into the building. She remained quiet as the elevator opened up to a palatial living room where Emma was waiting on the sofa. Even without any makeup, she was stunning, as was the view of Manhattan out the window behind her. Emma, what's going on? You don't really live here, do you? Lisa, there's something I need to tell you, but I don't want you to be upset. Emma motioned Lisa to seat on the sofa next to her. Tell me, do you have a new boyfriend? No, Emma shook her head, holding back a smile. I'm married. After a long pause, Lisa burst out. What did you say? You're married? Who are you married to? What are you talking about? Interrupting her barrage of questions, Eric came into the room. Hello, Lisa, he said. To her surprise, he walked over to Emma, leaned over affectionately, and whispered gently into her ear. I know, she responded. I'll only be about a half an hour. See you later, Lisa, he said, and headed back out of the room. Lisa froze in disbelief. Emma, pinch me. I want to know if I'm dreaming. Are you married to Eric Roberts, the CEO of Kaleidoscope? Um, yeah. For real? Yes. You're not hallucinating. It's really him, my new husband, Emma said. Lisa's mood changed from distress to excitement. Emma, this is such a great surprise. I can't believe it. I'm cured. You're cured? I'm cured of my hatred for your mystery man. You totally made the right decision. If you're going to get married to someone, it shouldn't be to that piece of trash Nathan. Ooh, when he finds out, God, that'll be so satisfying. Episode 12, Who's the Spokesperson Now? I'm not planning to announce my relationship with Eric just yet, Emma explained calmly and confidently. With his help, I know my career could advance by leaps and bounds. But I don't want anyone to say that my success is due to being his wife. Three years ago, I became a top model in New York through my own hard work. I'm confident I can do it again. If you're still willing to help me, then let's do this together. But if you want to move on, I won't pressure you. I'll even help you find another position at a better company. Of course I'll stand by your side. I want to become the manager of the next international supermodel, Lisa replied enthusiastically. But are you planning to stay at Global Entertainment? What do you think? Emma gave Lisa a look, letting her figure out the answer herself. Nathan has used me over and over, and I plan to make him pay. Lisa burst out laughing as she leaned into Emma. Emma, I never knew you could be so sneaky. So what's the next move? Should we release the video? No, let's secure the spokesperson deal first. To be precise, let's take what should have been mine right out of Amber's hands. Afterwards, when Amber's fans are complaining, then we'll release the video. In the meantime, can you help edit the clips from the Bellamy show and post them online? Of course, leave it to me. Lisa was impressed with the changes she was seeing in Emma. Who knew she could be this powerful? Emma sent Lisa home and then headed back into the beautifully scented bedroom. Eric had changed into a robe and was sitting on a sofa enjoying a glass of red wine. He was gorgeous, with a strong jaw and a sculpted body. Just looking at him made Emma's heart flutter. She was nervous, but walked over to sit beside him. He reached for her and softly kissed her, his lips tasting of the full-bodied red wine. Emma was caught off guard and blushed. Eric laughed and gently kissed her on the tip of her nose. Do you like the taste of wine on my lips? Perhaps you should try some more. Mm-hmm. Emma nodded. Let's do it again, then. Eric took another sip of wine and kissed Emma gently at first, then with more and more passion. As Eric's kisses slowly made their way down her body, she began trembling. She had never felt such electric sensations before. She was weak as a sandcastle, 
ready to be swept away by the waves. Eric, she stammered, let's go to the bed. Eric sat up and looked at Emma's long, lean, beautiful body before wrapping her in his bathrobe. He lifted her up and took her into the bathroom, placing her gently into the tub. What is it? Don't you want me? Eric wrapped a towel around his body and knelt before Emma. He lifted her chin and spoke. I want your heart first. When I'm the only person in your heart, then I will make you completely mine. He smoothed her hair, calming himself at the same time. I desperately want you. I think you don't even know how attractive you are. But I want all of you, body and heart. And I want to wait until you're certain. Emma nodded, grasping Eric's hands. It's been such a long time since a man has treated me with respect. Even though he wanted to crush Nathan into pieces, he had faith that Emma could take care of herself. The next morning, the war between the two models was already old news, and the rumors about Nathan and Amber had been buried under Global's newest press releases. Interestingly, Emma's straightforward response to the media had an unexpected benefit. She gained a huge number of new fans, who were now searching online for her old appearances and photos. Amber and Nathan had failed to notice that Emma's popularity was on the rise. Her performance with the Crown Star during the Bellamy show had been spectacular. Her new fans felt that she should get the recognition she deserved, so they shared her videos online and bombarded Bellamy with fan mail. Based on the fans' reactions, Bellamy's founder, Julius Taylor, began watching the videos of Emma's performance. He was amazed by her beauty and suddenly realized that the model he'd been so angry with was the perfect match for his jewelry. It was like they were made for each other. Now that he had the time to calm down, he realized that Emma's elegance and professionalism were infinitely better for representing the crown star than Amber had ever been. Ironically, because Emma had admitted wrongdoing, Julius even felt he could now trust her. He called a meeting at Bellamy to discuss changing the spokesperson. After watching the videos, the group reached the only possible conclusion. Emma had to be the next spokesperson. Julius called the head of Global Entertainment. Mr. Taylor, Nathan said as he answered the phone. Amber has almost completely recovered from her injuries and should be able to represent your company very soon. I'm not calling about that, Mr. Davis. Bellamy has decided to change spokespersons. We would like Emma to step in for Amber, he said. Nathan didn't know how to react. Mr. Taylor, I don't think that's right. We haven't signed the contract yet. If you're not willing to have Emma serve as the spokesperson, we would prefer to cancel this collaboration and work with another company. But we have other models, ones that are more famous than Amber. We only want Emma. Taylor had made up his mind, leaving Nathan with no choice. This deal was supposed to have cleared Amber's path to the Top 10 Model Award. Telling her she was no longer the spokesperson was going to be tricky. The news quickly spread to Lisa, who called Emma right away. Emma, Emma, you got the deal, she yelled over the phone. Don't get ahead of yourself, Lisa. Amber isn't going to just let this deal slip away. Episode 13, Emma Stands Firm. News of Bellamy's request to change spokespersons quickly spread throughout the entertainment industry. Eric heard the news and realized that Emma had successfully taken back her position from Amber. It would barely have registered on the radar as an impressive contract for any of his models. But he knew it was a huge deal for Emma. He called her immediately. You did well. I'm very impressed. She laughed and responded, Getting that compliment from you makes me happier than anything else. I'm looking forward to seeing what you'll do next, he said. She simply responded, so am I. But for now, she needed to return to Global and face Amber. Amber was fast asleep at Nathan's home, not yet aware of Bellamy's decision. She'd headed straight to his place from the hospital and demanded his undivided attention all night, refusing to let him call Emma. 
She was determined not to lose anything that was hers, and especially not to Emma, who always seemed to be waiting just around the corner. She was awoken by her assistant banging on the door. Finally, she reluctantly rolled out of the comfortable bed, pulled a dressing gown around her, and opened the door just a crack. Gary was impatient and flustered. Without speaking, he shoved the door further open with his elbow and held out his phone to show her the screen, already open to the entertainment news. Her first reaction was disbelief. What the hell is this? Bellamy already chose me. They can't go back on it now. Amber, this has already happened. Bellamy called Nathan and personally told him to make Emma the spokesperson or they would find another company. Gary jabbed his finger at the phone. What did Emma do? How did she make this happen? We're going to Global to talk to Nathan in person, Amber said. She knew that if she just called him, he would say he was too busy to talk to her. Her best option was just to go down to the office and force him to deal with her face to face. Nathan was sitting in his office, feeling wrung out. Bell and me were adamant about signing Emma instead of Amber, and he couldn't lose the deal, but he knew how upset Amber would be. While he was still trying to figure out what he could say to Amber, she showed up at his office in the wheelchair the hospital had provided for her recovery. Nathan, what's going on? How could my deal be going to Emma instead? He bent down awkwardly to hug her. Amber, it's beyond my control, but I promise I'll help you secure an even better deal. She angrily pushed him away. I don't want another deal. You know as well as I do that Julius Taylor's sister is on the judging panel for the Top Ten Model Awards. This deal was really important to me. How could you just hand it over to Emma? She's already stolen you from me. Isn't that enough? Why is she trying to take everything from me like this? If I lose this deal, I'm not going through with your plan to leave the country to have our child. And I won't stay a global either. Don't say that, Amber. We need to stick with what we've planned. You know I'm on your side. Why does she need this deal anyway? As far as she knows, she's about to marry you. I bet you could get her to change your mind if you really tried. Emma's given in to pressure easily enough in the past. Maybe I could convince her to give up the deal with Bella Me. Nathan thought. I'll speak to her. Don't cry, honey. It'll all be okay. Amber reached out for Nathan, sobbing. Just then, Emma knocked on the door. Amber immediately stopped crying and pulled away from Nathan with a fierce, bitter expression on her face. Emma, where were you? Don't you know I was looking for you all night? He asked. Emma glanced at him and then at Amber as Nathan continued. It was all just a misunderstanding between Amber and me, and I've already released a statement to clear it up. You don't need to make such a fuss. Emma knew very well what he meant by looking for her all night. He had obviously searched so hard, he ended up searching in his bed with Amber. Otherwise, he would have noticed that she was no longer living at her old place. Calmly, she met his eyes and said, Well, it's too bad that the problem between me and Amber isn't just a misunderstanding. I've helped out covering for her so many times in the past few years, but she turned around and stabbed me in the back the first chance she got. Do you both really think I'm that easy to push around? Emma, Amber was worried and stressed with all the media attention. She did the only thing she thought she could. Emma raised her eyebrows skeptically, but Nathan didn't notice and carried on. Look, that's not the issue right now. That incident is all over. It, it's water under the bridge. Please, let's forget about it. I have something else I want to talk to you about. I want you to turn down the spokesperson deal with Bellamy. Getting that deal is very important to Amber. You've already stepped away from the spotlight, so you don't need this kind of exposure. He spoke straightforwardly, as if it was already a done deal that Emma would agree. That contract was always meant to be mine, Amber added. Bellamy only suggested you because of my injury, but as you can see, I'm almost recovered. And besides, you haven't done a show for so long, you probably can't even walk a runway anymore. You don't want to look like some stand-in, do you? That's a bit ironic, you asking that question of me, don't you think? Emma responded coldly. Emma, what's gotten into you? Nathan snapped. If you love me, you won't take this deal. 
Global needs Amber to win the top 10 model competition as a reputation boost. And the best way for her to win is by signing this deal with Bellamy. Amber laughed to herself. She was confident Emma would do anything for Nathan, even if it meant giving up such a lucrative deal. Nathan, quick, give Bellamy a call, she said. Let them know Emma's too busy planning her wedding and can't take on any new jobs. Nathan nodded, reaching for the phone. But just as he picked it up, Emma stopped him. You're too late. I've already accepted the offer. Emma! Nathan exclaimed in shock. She had never pushed back against any of his decisions before. I spoke to Mr. Taylor this morning, she continued. We're both really looking forward to working together. Episode 14. Nathan Resorts to Threats Emma, I'm the president of Global Pictures Entertainment. I make the decisions, not you. Nathan was furious. Why are you insisting on taking Amber's deal? You think this was my idea? Bellamy asked for me and said they would take their business elsewhere unless I stepped up. I took the deal for your sake, so Global wouldn't be left with nothing. You know, I hadn't believed the rumors about you and Amber, but if you'd rather take a loss like that than have me be the spokesperson, then maybe the two of you do have something going on after all. Of course not, he denied hastily. I can't believe you'd say such a thing. It's just that, since we're going to get married and start a family soon, I figured you'd rather not take on any extra professional responsibilities. But Emma wasn't done. Oh, so would you like to try explaining that to Julius Taylor? And what do you mean by saying that I took the deal from Amber? As far as I can tell, she's done all the taking. She's been doing it for years. Amber was getting angry now as well resenting the accusations and the suggestions that she hadn't earned her own success. Emma, you're the one who stepped out of the limelight. Take anything from you? What did you think was going to happen to your work? That we just let it go to another company? Fine, Emma said. You're right. If you can persuade Mr. Taylor to change his mind, I'll step down. Could Emma really be giving in? Nathan was now stuck in a difficult position. Emma was obviously still angry, or else she wouldn't have had the nerve to defy him like she never had before. And he'd promised Amber that Emma would give her back the deal. But ultimately, it was clear that Bellamy would take their contract somewhere else if they didn't get Emma. In the end, he had to protect the bottom line. Enough. Since Bellamy has requested Emma, and Emma has already agreed, we're going with her. But Nathan... Amber whined. I made my decision, he snapped. It's time for both of you to accept it and leave. Emma, ask Lisa to come in when you go. It was clear that, even though he was left with no choice, he resented being pushed into the decision. Emma had a pretty good idea what Nathan was thinking, but if he expected her to feel bad about hurting his feelings, he was dreaming. Amber followed Emma out of the office, anger continuing to boil up inside her. But she comforted herself that, even if Emma appeared to be making a comeback right now, she wasn't that popular yet. Amber planned to do everything she could to crush her. As soon as she saw her assistant, Gary, who was waiting in the lobby, she said, I want you to take a few photos of me working hard to recover and post them online. Let's stir up my fans' sympathy and get them to complain that Emma has stolen my deal. If I can't have it, I'm not going to let her take it. Don't you worry, Gary said. I know exactly what to do. Emma found Lisa waiting in her office and said, Nathan wants to talk to you. Don't be too nervous. Nervous? Are you kidding me? Who do you think I am? Lisa rolled her eyes. It's not my first day on the job, you know. If he thinks I'm just some pushover he can tear down, he's in for a shock. She headed into Nathan's office, a fierce expression on her face. She was not going to hold back. Nathan thrust a pile of papers in front of Lisa. I'm terminating your agreement with Global. You need to leave the premises. And you should make preparations to compensate us for breach of contract. Leave? Lisa laughed. Nathan, you must have a bad memory. When I first signed my contract, my salary was clearly stated alongside Emma's appearance fees. With all the work you've let Amber steal from her, I haven't once gotten paid as much as my contract stipulates. And the posts I made were all in Emma's best interest. 
ultimately benefiting the company. I did nothing wrong. If anyone should be worrying about breach of contract, it's you. You. Nathan couldn't believe his ears. If you aren't afraid of making global situation worse, we can always take this to court. I'm fine with that. But you must want to think about the rest of the industry losing trust in your brand. She paused to let her words sink in. Look, Nathan, I obviously won't be staying, but I don't want to leave on bad terms. Let's make this as painless as possible. What do you want? He muttered through gritted teeth. I'll agree to leave Global without a fuss, and you'll let all of this drop. You won't come after me for any kind of compensation, and from now on, we don't owe each other anything. He glared at her angrily, but recognized that this was the only option he had left. Fine, just leave. I don't want to see you again. Nathan, let me give you a warning. There is no wall thick enough to block out what you've got coming to you. You'll be paying for the way you treated Emma for a very long time. Nathan glared at her as she walked out of the door with the now worthless paperwork he based his whole plan on. He grabbed his desk and flipped it over, shattering the contents all over the floor. Instead of leaving the building, Lisa went back to Emma's office, where the two of them celebrated the success of this part of the plan and set to work plotting their next step. When Nathan left his office to take a break, they ran straight into each other. Why are you still here? he asked. Emma froze for a moment. Then she replied, I just hired Lisa. Emma, what are you talking about? It's Global's call who will be managing you, not yours. She was driving him crazy. Oh, I didn't hire Lisa to be my manager. I hired her to be my assistant. It's in my contract that I can hire my own assistant, isn't it? Emma smiled sweetly. Lisa has looked after me so well for so long. She's the only person I trust to understand what I need to do a good job. Nathan pulled her aside, out of Lisa's earshot. Emma, what's wrong with you? Are you doing this just to spite me? Not everything is about you, Nathan. But for your information, Lisa is a lot more thoughtful than you and has never accused me of stealing anything from anybody. He looked at her coldly. Emma, you've always supported my career before. I don't understand what's going on. I told you, that whole mess with the Crown Star was the last time I'll ever take the blame for you or Amber. She remained calm, her voice steady and firm, her eyes completely emotionless. Nathan took a deep breath. If you're really going to be this childish, maybe we should call off our wedding, he hissed. He was sure that this tactic would make Eva apologize and regret ever trying to go up against him. She remained silent for a few moments, allowing him to believe that his threat was sinking in and she would cave. He could never have anticipated the response she was about to give. Episode 15 Emma and Amber Make Plans You don't want to get married anymore? Okay, we won't, Emma said with a pleasant smile. Let's wait until you're not busy. We can talk more later. Nathan was in shock. He reached out and grabbed Emma's shoulder. Don't you love me anymore? What about you? Do you love me? Emma carefully slipped out of his grasp, mindful of her promise to Eric not to get too close to another man. Nathan was stunned into silence. He opened his mouth, but nothing came out. The truth was he had never had any real feelings for Emma, but he wasn't ready to give up his hold over her just yet. How can you even question my love? He finally said. Of course I want to marry you. I just wish you would think a little about all the stress I'm under. It hasn't been easy trying to get Amber into the running for the top ten awards. It's frustrating that you can't be more understanding. Emma slowly distanced herself from him, remaining composed. Well, if we're going to get married, you'll have to get used to me. This is who I am from now on. She left him standing there alone as she left the building. Nathan stood still for a while, trying to figure things out. He couldn't understand why Emma's attitude had changed so much. But after some thought... He decided she was just jealous of Amber. He didn't have the energy to chase after her and try and talk things out. After she cooled down, she'll get over it, he thought. Besides, he needed to spend some time smoothing things over with Amber 
who was still very upset. Emma put Nathan straight out of her mind and decided to hurry home to see Eric. The very thought of seeing him made her heart speed up in excitement. Emma, I'll take you home first so you can recharge, said Lisa. Tomorrow we're signing the Bellamy contract and then straight off for an out-of-town commercial shoot. Lisa, would you be up for canceling the lease on your apartment and moving into my old home rent-free? You can go ahead and change the locks. If Nathan asks, you could just say that you've moved in to work more closely with me, and he can't have a key anymore. Tomorrow, I'll sign a new contract with you. That works for me. It'll save me some money, if nothing else. After a pause, Lisa looked at Emma with a smirk. The mighty president of Kaleidoscope. How are things going there? Don't be so nosy, Emma replied, refusing to meet her friend's eyes. When Emma got to Eric's place, he wasn't back yet. She made her way into the kitchen and found his personal chef preparing dinner. Please, let me help, she said. There's no need. I wouldn't want to trouble you, the chef, an amicable middle-aged woman, answered. How about this instead, Emma suggested. Please, let me give you the rest of the day off, and I'll cook dinner for Eric tonight. After some persuasion, Emma ushered the chef out of the kitchen and started her own cooking. Eric didn't get home until late at night. Not seeing Emma at first, he followed his nose to the kitchen. He was surprised to see her standing at the stove wearing an apron. After a moment admiring her long, slender legs, he quietly approached her, hugged her from behind, and gently kissed the back of her neck. Eric, careful, I'm cooking. Don't you want to eat? He reached over and turned off the stove. I sure do, but right now... I just want to nibble on you. Emma put down the spoon and turned around to hug Eric. His soft touch completely captivated her. He kissed her gently, inching slowly down her body before returning to her collarbone, where he stopped. Any lower, and I won't be able to control myself. The dinner! I need to finish cooking. She pushed away from his embrace and turned on the stove again. He chuckled and massaged her shoulders as he inhaled the delicious aroma. Let me help you cook. Mr. Eric Roberts, CEO of Kaleidoscope, can cook? Emma asked, raising her eyebrows. You know, this one time is okay, he said softly. But from now on, no more cooking for you. You shouldn't have to put in all this work, and it would be a tragedy if you scalded yourself. I'm quite capable of taking care of myself in the kitchen she said playfully, touched by his concern. They continued preparing their dinner together. It turned out that Eric was actually quite an accomplished cook. When the meal was ready, they took a moment to admire the gorgeous spread they'd put together. It felt special, like something not just any couple could do in such perfect sync. As they sat down to enjoy their meal together, Emma said, Tomorrow, I'm headed to Seattle for a commercial shoot. I'm not sure how long the trip will be, but I definitely won't be home tomorrow night. Are you signing the contract with Bellamy tomorrow? Will you be leaving right after that? Yes. Bellamy wants to launch their new product as soon as possible, she said. Eric, I'll need some time, but I know that I can rise to a position that you'll be proud of. I'm already proud of you, but I have no doubts that you can reach the most dizzying heights of the industry, he responded placing a morsel of food on Emma's plate. Not only was he looking forward to seeing her advance, he was also gleefully anticipating just how miserable Nathan and Amber would be. Meanwhile, the wind and rain had picked up, matching Amber's stormy mood. She returned to Nathan's house in a fury and began grabbing plates, cups, and bowls, smashing them by hurling them to the ground as hard as she could. Every time she thought of Emma signing the Bellamy contract, her rage took over and she smashed something else. To make matters worse, Nathan had actually supported Emma. The whole thing was unbearable. Nathan came home to find the floor covered in shards of broken crockery and Amber holding a vase above her head, ready to hurl it down. He carefully picked his way across the floor, grabbed the valuable vase, and embraced her. Try not to get so upset. It's not good for you or the baby. Oh, you think you know what's best for me and the baby? You just stood by and let Emma steal that huge deal out from under me. 
How is that good for any of us? We still have plenty of options. I'm already working on securing an even bigger deal for you. Stop focusing on Emma. Even if she is working with Bella me now, nothing's going to come of it for her. Listen to me, babe. Don't hurt yourself. She's held on to you for so many years, said Amber with tears in her eyes. I can't let her have this, too. It felt like the only comfort at that moment was that Gary's efforts were already having an effect. He was posting content to rip Emma's reputation to shreds, and it was paying off. Even if Amber couldn't end up winning exactly how she wanted, she was determined to see Emma lose. And the next part of the plan was about to unfold. She told Gary to post the details of Emma's travel schedule, giving Amber's supporters plenty of opportunities to cause trouble. The next day, Emma was going to see that she really shouldn't have met with Amber. Episode 16. Give the Contract Back. The Bellamy contract signing ceremony was scheduled for 9 a.m. and would be streamed live. After the broadcast, Bellamy's support for Emma would be clear to everyone. It had been three years since Emma had attended an event like this, and she'd almost forgotten how it felt. But as soon as she put on her white low-back dress and the jewelry Bellamy had provided for her for the occasion, she found herself glowing with confidence. Lisa had arrived early at Emma's new home to pick her up and see if she needed anything. Emma had let Eric know about their new arrangement, so Lisa had access to the place whenever she needed it. She was eager to get a better look at Eric's gorgeous home. Emma was getting ready in the bedroom and invited Lisa to come in. Your husband has excellent taste, Lisa gushed, gazing around the room in awe. This place is spectacular. Eric came into the room and said to Lisa, I have something I need to talk about with Emma. Could you give us some privacy? Sure, I'll step out for a bit. Lisa headed out to explore more of the rooms, closing the door as she left the bedroom. Emma faced Eric, feeling fresh and elegant as a lily. His breath caught as he looked at her. Is something wrong? she asked. He didn't answer at first. Instead, he just reached for Emma and pulled her into an embrace, gently covering her mouth with his. Nothing is wrong. I just needed to kiss you, and I couldn't wait any longer. Emma felt herself getting swept up in the moment as well, but she moved away reluctantly. I need to go. I can't be late. I'll be watching the live stream of the contract signing, he said, and they walked out of the room arm in arm to find Lisa. Lisa was captivated by the sight of the couple. They were opposites, complementing each other perfectly. Emma was like white, pure snow, while Eric was as alluring as a dangerous dark night. This is how Emma's husband should look, she thought. Not like Nathan, the jerk, who's not that exciting to look at. Emma and Lisa headed down to street level together, got in Lisa's car, and headed to the signing. You'll be signing the contract at 9. We should be there by 10, so you'll be right on time. It was planned perfectly so Emma wouldn't be late, but also wouldn't be hanging around as if she had nothing better to do. Thanks for making the arrangements, Emma answered. You're always so on top of things. Hey, it's just what I do. Your flight's at three, so there's plenty of time to get to the airport after the signing. But listen, Amber has arranged for her fans to stop you at the airport. They're planning something to make you look bad. One of them's going to try to embarrass you, and the others will pretend to be random passengers who are disgusted with you. Lisa grimaced in disapproval at the thought of a grown woman resorting to schoolyard bullying tactics. How do you know all this? Because I planted eyes on the inside, Lisa said proudly. We'll let those kids be happy playing their game for a bit, but then we'll see who has the last laugh. Emma chuckled as she shook her head. Amber certainly could stir people up to cause trouble but she was confident she could handle anything they threw at her. Right on time, Emma arrived at the hotel for the contract signing and walked past the reporters who were standing behind barriers. Emma, you disappeared after your apology, then showed up and took Amber's contract. How'd you pull that off? Is Amber accusing you of stealing her deal while she's in recovery? Emma, are you planning to make a comeback? Emma smiled graciously the whole time, but didn't respond to any of their questions. 
Once she got inside, she shared a warm greeting with Julius Taylor and listened attentively to how the event was going to go. Nathan had sent his regrets. He had planned to attend the signing, but was tied up elsewhere. Unfortunately for them both, this reinforced the public impression that Emma and Global were on bad terms. Of course, the real reason he couldn't attend was Amber. She'd put her foot down and refused to allow him to show up and support Emma. At Kaleidoscope's office, Eric was in his office watching the live stream. He was impressed with Emma's presence. She was poised and beautiful, impossible to ignore. As the stream ended, Eric phoned his assistant. Get bodyguards for Emma for the next few hours. Four should be about right. I want her protected until she boards the plane. Yes, Mr. Roberts, I'll take care of it, Luke responded. Even though Emma had sailed through the contract signing, Eric was sure there were rough seas ahead. After the contract was signed, Emma and Julia sat down for brunch. After a pleasant hour, she left the hotel to head to the airport. The closer they got to their destination, the more nervous Lisa became. Emma, I'll try my best to protect you, but you have to be on guard. I've got this. Don't worry. Emma had dealt with a lot over the past few years. She was confident everything would be fine. At the airport, Lisa took the bags out of the trunk and helped Emma out of the car as well. At first, it seemed they had escaped notice. No one paid any attention to them. But once they stepped into the airport building, a gaggle of young fans ran over with flowers. Emma reached out for the flowers, but they fell to the ground before she could take hold of them. Emma, one of them shouted, why did you throw our flowers on the floor? The others began shouting as well. We were just trying to be nice. What's your problem? I'm so sorry, she tried to say, but the group kept shouting over her. I can't believe you're such a snob. You're barely even famous. You threw away the flowers on purpose. What? You don't think we're good enough to give you a gift? Amber Lee was way nicer than you. She loves getting gifts and always stops for selfies. You think getting one deal means you're replacing her? Other people in the area were drawn into the angry group as the shouting continued. As more and more people crowded around and the number of curious onlookers grew, Amber's fans decided to start the second stage of their plan. They pushed closer to Emma, trying to cut her off from any route out of the crowd. One of them started chanting and the rest joined in. Give the contract back! Give the contract back! Give the contract back! The chanting went on and on. Emma thought she would never escape. Episode 17 Emma Turns the Tables The group got louder and louder, and the people passing by started taking photos and videos. The more the group shouted at Emma, the more the onlookers started to think that Emma had really wronged Amber. Seeing no way to escape, Emma was on the verge of panicking, but after a few moments, she forced herself to take some slow, deep breaths and calm down. Instead of cowering, she took off her sunglasses to face the crowd and spoke firmly to them. I'll answer your questions, but will you answer mine first? The shouting stopped, and the group looked at her, wondering what she had up her sleeve. You came to give me flowers as if you were my fans. Are you really my fans? If so, tell me, what year did I make my debut? What awards have I won? What was my most prestigious award? The fans looked blankly at each other. How could they possibly know that? None of that matters. You threw our gifts on the ground. You rejected us, one of them responded. You know that I didn't throw the flowers on the ground and that I apologized right away for dropping them. I'm sure everyone heard, and the airport security footage will show it clearly. I've also acknowledged before that Amber has a lot to teach me. So tell me, what else are you unhappy about? She spoke gently but firmly, making sure everything was clear and straight to the point. Her straightforward attitude impressed the more casual onlookers, who were starting to wonder why these fans were causing such a fuss. So much hassle over a bunch of dropped flowers was really petty, and crowding around Emma and scaring her was going too far. Fine, it's true, said one of the more aggressive fans. I'm Amber's fan, not yours. But you deserve to be compared to her. You stole her contract, and you should let her have it back. The woman lashed out in frustration and shoved Emma. She stumbled and would have fallen, but luckily Eric's bodyguards had finally arrived. 
They helped Emma stand up, then angrily pushed the crowd back. Lisa was furious. She stood between Emma and the crowd, then turned her head slightly toward Emma. You go on ahead. I'll be right behind you. Okay. Emma didn't argue. She simply put her sunglasses back on and moved aside. We want an explanation right now, insisted the aggressive fan. She shouted toward Emma. Don't even think about getting on that plane without ripping up the contract. It belongs to Amber. The hostile group linked their hands to form a human barrier, preventing them from moving into the airport. Do you really believe Amber's so pure and innocent? Lisa asked. She's definitely better than your cheap excuse for a model. I've recorded this whole thing, Lisa said, holding up her phone. Just you wait. When the time is right, I'll send you all a big gift. Finally, airport security and the police, with the help of Eric's bodyguards, managed to start dispersing the crowd. As quickly as possible, Emma was escorted away to a safe area. But as she was being hurried away, she asked an officer to make sure that no one in the crowd was hurt or arrested. While they waited for their flight, Lisa couldn't stop looking at her phone. Amber's flooding social media with the news that you stole her contract, Lisa said. Then what are you waiting for? It's time to release the video, Emma replied. Ooh, I've been waiting for this. Now those fans will see their goddess for the scheming rat that she really is, not some innocent sweetheart who can do no wrong. Lisa made a call to one of her media contacts. Go ahead and post that video I sent you in case of emergency. Emma smirked to herself. There you go, Nathan. Let's see if you can save Amber this time. In the lounge at Global, Amber was relishing the stir she'd caused. She was scrolling gleefully through the photos her fans had posted from the scenes at the airport. Her dislike of Emma had now turned to an all-out hatred. She wanted Emma to really understand the consequences of messing with her. And this was just a taste. The worst was yet to come. Amber, after this incident, I'm sure you'll get even better offers, Gary said as he massaged her shoulders. I'm planning on it. I need to get a place at the Top Ten Model Awards. She smiled. Nathan's promise that he would help her get another deal had raised her confidence. Confirming his efforts to be true to his word, Nathan appeared in the doorway holding a contract. My top ten model, I have a big offer here. Let's go talk about it. Amber nodded, feeling exceptionally satisfied with herself as she headed into the conference room to discuss the details. Nathan addressed the group that had already gathered in the room. Although Amber lost the contract with Bellamy, I now have a deal for her with an international cosmetics brand. She really is Global Entertainment's most precious gem. Amber beamed, basking in his enthusiastic praise. As for Emma, if anyone asks for her, tell them that she's getting married and won't be taking any more jobs. Upon hearing those words, Amber's smile grew even larger and her gaze locked with Nathan. But just as they were staring into each other's eyes, Nathan received a phone call. At least he had a smile on his face, but it soon disappeared. But, Mr. Blair, why would you cancel the contract all of a sudden? The manager on the other end of the line was talking so loudly that everyone could hear both sides of the conversation. That indecent video of you and Amber has gone viral. I would be ashamed to be associated with the two of you. He said nothing further, just hung up the call immediately. Oh my god, what video? Amber asked. Nathan pulled out his phone and started searching. At the top of all the news feeds was a video of the two of them in the hospital bed getting intimate. What was going on in the video wasn't something they could explain away as some accident, like they had with the photos. Seeing his reaction, Amber grabbed the phone away from him. She was so stunned by what she saw, she dropped it on the floor. How could this happen? How? Everyone else in the room took out their phones to see what was going on. Amber started yelling, Don't look! Don't look! It's over. Everything's over. Nathan angrily plopped down on his chair like a child. Someone's trying to ruin me. Amber's official fan page was also in an uproar. Her fans had accepted the accusations and stormed over to the airport to insult Emma. But now, they felt like they'd been slapped in the face. The video had started spreading like wildfire by the time Lisa and Emma boarded their flight. Lisa was scrolling through Amber's feeds, watching her fans tear her down. She smirked as she read through the comments. I never thought Amber would be so cheap. 
We must have been blind to idolize her. I've lost all respect for her. Me too. Me too. We should be the ones to prove Emma's innocent. At the airport, we insulted her, but she never tried to get back at us. But even when the police were breaking us up, she told them not to hurt us. I overheard her telling them. Amber must have planned that whole scene. Her assistant was the one who gave us them a schedule. Lisa's smile stretched from ear to ear. This was all so satisfying. She could only imagine that Amber and Nathan must be in a real panic. Emma, how are you so smart? I really love you. Lisa wrapped Emma in a hug as she planted a kiss on her cheek. But I don't love you, Emma replied teasingly. Then who do you love? Mr. Kaleidoscope. Emma was indeed thinking of Eric and was especially missing his kisses. If she wasn't careful, kissing him would become a habit. Episode 18. Emma's skills are tested. In an instant, Nathan and Amber's news became the talk of the town. Even Global's PR team couldn't make this story go away. Their previous success in hiding the truth behind the damaging photos was wiped out. Everyone had known that Nathan and Emma were engaged. Now they also knew that Nathan was a cheat and Amber was a conniving liar. To make matters worse, an entertainment reporter stepped up with additional news. He revealed that Emma had nothing to do with the decision to fill in for Amber as the model for the crown star. Now the world knew the truth that Nathan and Amber had pushed for Emma to stand in for Amber, and then Nathan had forced her to take the blame for the whole situation. The online community was in an uproar, but worse was yet to come. Later that day, even bigger news came out regarding the incident at the airport. At first, things had gone according to plan, and Emma had been criticized for being rude to her fans. But after the video from the hospital was released, Amber's fans decided that they'd had enough and could no longer support their former idol at Emma's expense. They posted a statement on the official fan page clearing Emma of any fault at the airport. The statement revealed that Amber had encouraged them to plan the whole thing to embarrass Emma and protect Amber. Now they realized that Amber was not worth protecting. They also released evidence that Amber's assistant had given them the details of Emma's travel schedule, including her departure time, airport location, and airline. Finally, they clarified that Emma had not thrown the flowers on the ground. She'd actually been much more polite to them than they deserved. They even recognized that Emma had tried to protect the fans by asking the police to be careful with them. Amber's official fan club had become a leaderless army. Her biggest fans had turned their backs on her. How could they ever trust her again? Not only were her fans abandoning her, it seemed that everyone had turned on her. A number of companies who had featured her in their marketing campaigns took down the ads and started the process to cancel her contract. Amber knew she was finished. Completely finished. Hiding out at Nathan's house, she was looking for anything else that she could smash. Her assistant tried to stop her. Amber, you need to stay calm. You have to think about the baby, Gary said. There's no need to get so upset. There's still good things coming for you. Remember, the pregnancy means you have a hold over Nathan. You may have to stop modeling for now, but he'll eventually have to break off his engagement with Emma and marry you. Just think of all the power you'll have as the wife of global CEO. Amber started to feel calmer as she reminded herself that Gary's words had some truth to them. Even if Emma was making a comeback, Amber still had a chance to come out ahead, especially given that she was pregnant with Nathan's child. As soon as they stepped off the plane, Emma received a video call from Eric, and Lisa began scrolling through her news feed. The news was looking good. Amber's reputation had taken a beating. Should I congratulate my wife on a victorious battle? Eric asked as he leaned back in his chair. The soft light in his room washed over his face, highlighting its sharp contours. He really was incredibly handsome. Emma laughed gently and responded in a cheeky tone. You don't need to congratulate me every time I make a move. Can't you tell? I'm just looking for any excuse to give you a call. Her heart fluttered. Too bad I can't come home tonight, she whispered. 
if you tell me that you miss me, a miracle might happen, Eric teased. Do you want to try? You don't need a miracle for me to tell you that I miss you, she replied seriously. She was embarrassed by her emotions, though, and hung up the phone before he could respond. Eric gave a muffled laugh as he called out to Luke. Luke, I want to go to Seattle. Could you get me on a flight as soon as possible? And while you're at it, prep those documents I need to review so I can take them with me. After leaving the airport, Emma and Lisa went straight to the studio for the photo shoot. Some of the other models who would be in the ad had already arrived. The photographer, Scott Young, thought they all seemed very professional, but he was worried about Emma. Her expressionless face and her low-key traveling outfit led him to worry that she wouldn't be able to meet the high expectations demanded by this opportunity. He needed the models to react quickly and show emotions that suited the jewelry they would be wearing. This photo shoot would be a real test of all their abilities. Emma changed into the clothes she would wear for the shoot. In a simple, low-cut black dress and a sleeveless denim jacket, she exuded sexiness. Scott realized at least he didn't have to worry about her beauty coming through in the photos. Everyone there, even the other models, were impressed with the perfect proportions and her refined silhouette. But her expression still seemed blank. Scott walked over to explain what he needed. The photos we're taking this evening really need to feel fierce. I want you to imagine you're a wild cat out at night prowling through your domain. I understand, Emma nodded. I'm ready. Scott wasn't convinced, but there was no time to discuss it further. Come on, everyone, it's time to start. Let's get going with some solo shots. The models were called up one by one to pose in front of the screen. Each one was professional and efficient, and Scott was easily getting exactly what he needed for the shots. Now the pressure was on Emma, who was up last. If she wasn't up to delivering what she needed to, the whole shoot would be ruined. When her name was called, Emma walked in front of the screen wearing the bracelet from Bellamy's Charming Night Collection. Scott once again explained that she needed to show her wildness, and Emma smiled and nodded her understanding. He was doubtful, thinking she was just pretending to understand, and hated when models did that. It usually resulted in a gigantic waste of everyone's time. Deciding not to confront her about it just yet, though, he said, let's just try a few test shots to make sure you've got it. I've got it, Emma responded. Let's just do it. Her confidence annoyed and aggravated him. He was starting to worry that his shoot would turn into a joke. You asked for it, he warned. Once I start, you won't get a second chance. That's fine, she answered calmly. The other models were convinced that she was making a mistake. Why wouldn't you take the chance to get some test shots in first? All right, let's go. Scott waved at Emma to get started, even though he was sure she would fail. She nodded, and then, like someone had flipped a switch, she seemed to become a completely different person, shocking everyone in the room. They watched as she took a wide stance, grasped her right wrist with her left hand, pulled it up to her mouth, and then gently spread apart her lips. As she bit down on her middle finger... Her eyes turned so fierce that one of the models gasped. They were almost frightened by the threatening look in her eyes. It was like she turned into a wild animal. Emma's moves were magical. She somehow made it seem like the bracelet on her wrist was supplying her with wild energy that was barely contained. She and the bracelet meshed together perfectly, like they were made for each other. The photographer was speechless. Where had Bellamy found this gem? Someone with this talent and skill could match any model on the international scene. Episode 19, Let's Get Married Immediately. Everyone in the room was stunned. How could Emma be this good? She didn't need any test shots, even though it was a challenging brief, and she had to change poses every few seconds. The shoot was just incredible. No matter what poses Scott asked for, Emma was able to provide them. It was almost as if he was testing her. He began by describing what he wanted, but then just started calling out single words. Glazy, seductive, threatening, cute. Emma immediately responded with exactly the right poses and expressions. She was quick and expressive, and she drew everyone's attention with her spellbinding presence. 
Lisa watched the whole session from the side, taking her own photos of Emma to send to Eric. She wouldn't have told anyone this, but she felt a secret thrill that she knew the CEO of Kaleidoscope and even had his phone number. What she didn't know, however, was that Eric was on his way to Seattle right at that moment. The intense photo shoot convinced the photographer and everyone watching that Emma was as good as any model in the industry, maybe better. The onlookers included Julius Taylor, who gave her an enthusiastic thumbs up from the side as the session finished up. He felt so bad that he'd yelled at her after the Crown Star fiasco that he'd apologized to her once again, this time in person. When the shoot was finally over, Emma removed her makeup and changed into her own clothes. Her expression regained its usual calm once again. Lisa hurried over to cover her with a jacket, feeling so overwhelmed with joy and satisfaction that her eyes were filling with tears. After giving Emma a quick hug, her phone started buzzing. She said to Emma with a frown, It's Nathan. Do you want to talk to him? Emma's gaze just darkened, but she took the phone from Lisa. Hello? Emma, how are you? Things good out there? Have you heard any news? Nathan asked, treading lightly. Why? Emma asked, pretending a calm she didn't really feel. What happened? Oh, it's nothing. He was sure she wouldn't have found out yet since she was busy in Seattle. How about I fly out to Seattle tomorrow? We can apply for a wedding license there and have a ceremony in a couple of days. It'll be perfect. The scenery is beautiful and the whole feel of the city is great. We could even take advantage of this opportunity to have a holiday. It could be our honeymoon. Nathan knew that Emma's family was very wealthy. They owned a famous perfume empire with sales in the millions of dollars. He also knew that they didn't like him and had practically cut all ties with Emma because of him. But in the end, she was still a miller and would inherit a pretty penny someday. He wanted to hold on to her. She looked good on his arm, she was naive and easy to control, and she would someday be very, very rich. He wanted to make sure they got married before she saw the damaging video. When she realized that he and Amber had been intimate after all, she was sure to call off the wedding. She shocked him with her response. Given what's been going on between you and Amber, I don't think we should get married right now. Emma, you know there's really nothing going on between Amber and me. I already explained what happened in those photos. Amber simply lost her balance because of her injury, poor girl, and fell into my arms. What could I do but catch her? And what about the video? Emma asked, maintaining her calm tone. I'm in Seattle, not out in the middle of nowhere with no Wi-Fi connection. Did you really think I wouldn't be able to see the news? Or that I would actually be that easy to trick? Emma, please, trust me a little. We've been together for so many years. Don't you know what type of person I am? Don't you know that you're the only one I love? Then let's put it this way. One of us has to leave Global. It's either Amber or me, Emma said decisively. Emma, you've always been the one who's understood me best. You've always been so supportive. Why are you pressuring me now? Now that he was being put on the spot, Nathan couldn't decide what to do. Amber was the woman he genuinely loved, and she was pregnant with his child. But Emma had the means to make him a very happy man down the road. If you feel like I'm pressuring you, feel free to go look for Amber. I'm sure she'll be very understanding. Now that he was thinking things through, Nathan decided maybe he should give up Amber. After all, she'd only gotten to be as successful as she was because of him. What could she really bring him in the future? It's you. I choose you. Give me some time to speak to Amber. I'll come out to meet you, and then we'll get married right away. I'll be waiting for you, Emma responded. Her words stayed calm, but inside she felt the contempt just waiting to spill out. Lisa glanced at Emma's scornful look and grabbed the phone back, hanging up the call. From now on, we're not taking any of his calls. Tired of him ruining the mood. That's fine with me. Let's go back to the hotel. I'm really tired. Back at the hotel, Lisa gave Emma a hug and said, Get some rest, and don't worry too much about Nathan and Amber. You've got to be refreshed for tomorrow's outdoor shoot. I know, Emma nodded before closing the door. She suddenly noticed the sound of water coming from the bathroom. Who's there? She asked in a challenging tone. Was her room being cleaned at that time of night? Emma heard the water turn off, but afraid she might have entered the wrong room, quickly headed back out the door. Before she could leave, a deliciously deep voice said, 
it's me. Emma turned around, shocked to see Eric. You? How? She stammered before he wrapped his arms around her. Didn't I say there would be a miracle? He loosened his grip, then placed a tantalizing kiss on her lips. I was tired from my flight, so I decided to have a shower to wake me up. Emma's mind was in a blur. She had no idea he was planning to show up. She wrapped her arms around his waist. My dear wife, should I remind you? I'm not wearing anything. Emma instinctively looked down, then up again. Her face flushed. Then go, finish your shower. Will you come with me? He picked her up and carried her into the bathroom, where he slowly undressed her and brought her into the shower. Holding her face between his hands, he went in for a passionate kiss. Careful with my lips, she said. I still need to shoot an ad tomorrow. He smirked before moving downward. What about here? Or here? Emma trembled under his touch and soon lost all awareness of her surroundings. True to his word to wait until he had completely won her heart, he stopped short of the final step. After their thoroughly pleasant shower, they relaxed in the bedroom. Emma slowly rubbed moisturizer onto her skin while Eric reviewed the documents he had brought with him. It's so late, she said. Do you still have to work? Eric put down his work and motioned Emma to come closer. When she sat down on his lap, he smiled apologetically. It's a habit. I can stop. Am I not interestingly enough for you? Today Nathan called and said he wants to marry me immediately, Emma complained sadly. Episode 20, Nathan's Choice In one quick movement, Eric grabbed Emma's waist and pulled her close. Oh, so are you thinking of marrying him, then? He teased. How could you even ask that? I admit I was lost once, but now I know exactly where I'm going, she murmured. My destination is you. Eric flipped over, positioning himself on top of her. He looked at her seriously with his dark eyes. I can barely control myself around you, but I know we have to wait. Even though we're already married, I still want you to get to know me and be sure you want to spend the rest of your life with me. When we're both certain we want to be together, that's when we'll truly belong to each other. He sighed and continued, In this business, my options are endless. I can have whatever I want. The only thing I've never been able to find before is a partner with a pure heart. Then we both share the same goal. Let's follow this path together and live a happy life, Emma replied. I would never have thought that Eric Roberts, king of the entertainment industry, doesn't just have a fun and carefree life. I always used to picture you as a player surrounded by swarms of beautiful women. Haven't you ever wanted that? When a woman asks a question like that, there's only one way to answer, he replied. He leaned over and gave her a passionate kiss, a kiss so fiery it made all her worries melt away. That night, wrapped in his arms, she slept more soundly than she ever had before. Meanwhile, Nathan was having a much harder time of things. Emma's request for Amber to leave Global had put him in an impossible predicament. Not only was Amber carrying his child, she also had the evidence of his misdeeds in her hands. She couldn't afford to offend either woman. He drove home that evening filled with uncertainty. When he opened the door to see Amber waiting for him on the couch, his heart sank. Nathan, she cried as she flung herself into his arms, grabbing him tightly around his waist. What should I do? Does this mean I can't be a model for you anymore? Amber, how about you go overseas for a while to take care of your pregnancy, Nathan said. You can come back after the baby's born, and when you do, I promise, I'll do what I've done before. I'll make you famous again. Amber stepped back from him in shock. You're asking me to leave the country? Are you trying to get rid of me? Maybe Emma's stupid enough to fall for something like that, but I'm not. She's going anywhere. Don't forget, I'm carrying your child. I've been your lover for so many years, Nathan. Do you really think you can just cast me aside like this? 
that that's not what I meant. Think carefully, Nathan. Who do you want to spend the rest of your life with? Do you love Emma? Of course not. I love you. Only you, he pleaded. But Emma gave me a condition. If you don't leave Global Pictures, she won't marry me. Even if you do marry her, you aren't guaranteed the Miller fortune, Amber argued. Your family doesn't seem to care about her. And if she did go ahead with marrying you and they somehow accepted it, how much would she even inherit? Do you really want to pin all your hopes on her only to end up with nothing? Stay with me. Then at least we'll have each other and our child. The three of us can build a future together. Isn't that what you want? She took a step toward him as she continued. Nathan, tell me the truth. Do you want me or do you want Emma? All I need is one word from you and I'll go straight to the abortion clinic. I'll leave Global Pictures and you'll never see me again. Nathan just looked at her, not saying a word. Amber turned away, picked up her phone, and called her assistant. Gary, get me a doctor's appointment right away. I want an abortion. What are you doing? Nathan cried, swiping the phone out of her hand. Don't be so cruel. Did I say I was leaving you? Her face lit up. Does that mean you're choosing me after all? How could I let you go? You're the only woman I love and the mother of my child. Don't you realize I've been protecting you all these years? He had finally made up his mind to end things with Emma. It was a pity to give up on the Miller's family wealth, but as Amber said, nothing was guaranteed to him anyway. He couldn't lose her and his child chasing an illusion. I knew you loved me, Amber Bean. You've always treated me better than her. She hugged him tightly as tears of joy began to stream down her face. All I want is to have your child and be part of your family. Just try not to stir up any more trouble. Don't go all mine too much and don't read those awful comments. News like this passes quickly. The top 10 model award judges won't be impressed by this scandal, but they're too focused on professionalism anyway. We can still reach your goals without them. I understand. But now you need to listen to me. She sat down on the sofa, pulling him down with her. You can't give Emma any more work. Look at how arrogant she is right now, thinking she's on top of the world just because she signed one deal. She thinks that she's all that. She's even trying to defy your orders. But Global Pictures will survive without her, Amber continued. If we need another model, we'll find one. But we can't just let her go either. If she has the chance to get revenge on us, she'll do it. Just hold on to her and keep her from working. In three years, she'll be so old she won't be able to make a comeback. But Emma has everyone in her corner right now. People will want to hire her. Doesn't that make things easier? Let's wait till she gets back from Seattle and find her some worthless corporate client, something low-end and cheap. She won't be so desirable after that. Nathan looked at Amber. He knew what she had suggested was a bit extreme, but he couldn't think of another way around the situation. He nodded and said, All right, I'll do it. Amber smiled. And if anyone else calls wanting to hire Emma, we'll just tell them she's not interested. Nathan pulled her close and planted a kiss on her forehead. This time, his decision came from the heart. He would end things with Emma. After that, she would be just another Global Pictures model with three years remaining on her contract. Just like Amber had said, he had to keep Emma from becoming famous and getting revenge on them. He needed to do everything he could to hold her down. I hope you enjoyed the episodes. Thank you for listening. See you on the next episodes. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.